All right, welcome to your videos on chapter eight for intro chem. So chapter eight is all about thermochemistry. So that's this word right here. And it's all related to thermodynamics, which is the study of energy and temperature changes. Okay, so we're gonna be talking a lot about energy, work, and heat. Now, an important thing to understand is, um, as we get into this, is that heat is different from temperature. So temperature is a measure of the amount of thermal energy. Okay, that's temperature. So heat, when we use the word heat, we're talking about a transfer of energy, okay? And specifically thermal energy, okay? So when we talking about temperature, that's the amount of thermal energy there. When we talk about heat, we're talking about a movement of thermal energy, okay? From high energy to low energy until they balance out. Okay, there are lots of different units of energy um, the joule is the SI unit, so the standard unit for energy is the joule. And it's a derived unit. If you remember way back, like early on chapter two, I think, we talked about derived units that are made up of other standard units. And one joule is a kilogram meters squared over second squared. But we won't really need to worry about that too much in this uh, chapter. Other common units of energy are the British thermal unit, um, BTUs, that's usually a measure of thermal energy. Kilowatt hours, if you ever look at your um, meter on the side of your house or um, on your apartment building or whatever, that is measuring kilowatt hours. And the other common one that we know are calories. And the first one listed here, notice that it's a lower C, lowercase c on the calorie, and that's a standard unit of energy equal to 4.184 joules, okay? Our capital C calories here, those are nutritional calories. Okay, so when you see a nutritional label on something and it talks about how many calories there are, it's talking about these capital C calories, which are kcals. So 1,000 calories is one kcal or one capital C nutritional calorie. Okay, and we will be doing some conversions between these various units of energy, most commonly between calories and joules. Okay, now the symbol for heat is Q. Okay, Q is heat. And why the letter Q is used to talk about heat, I honestly can't tell you. I'm guessing that it comes from some sort of German or Russian word for heat um, because the Germans and Russians did a lot to contribute to chemistry and physics um, in the past and currently. But um, suffice to say that the symbol for ener uh, heat energy is Q. Okay, the symbol for work is understandably W. Right Now, what we want to talk about in this slide is how we tell where which direction heat and work are going. Okay, so when something releases energy, energy is coming out, okay, the symbol on, the sign on Q is negative. And the most common way that I, I like to relate this to students is to think about your bank statement, okay? When money is coming out of your bank account, the symbol or the sign on your money is negative, right? So if money is coming out, we have a negative sign in front of the dollars. When money is coming in, there's usually a plus sign with your deposits, right? If money is coming in, we get a plus sign. So if energy is going in, we have a plus sign on Q. Okay, so if we have to put energy into a thing, Q will be positive. If energy is coming out of a thing, Q is negative, right? Same thing goes for work. So if work is coming out of a system, okay, for example, a piston expanding and pushing against the outside environment, okay, 
energy work is coming out of the system, so the same conventions apply. Our sign on W will be negative. Okay? If the outside world is pushing in or enacting a force on our system, work is going into the system, and the sign on W will be positive. Okay? Now, these terms on the left-hand pair of blocks, um, exothermic and endothermic, the way to help remember that is exo is kind of like the word exit, right? And what do you do when you exit something? You go out of a room, you exit a room. Okay, so exo is out. Endo is kind of like saying in, into endo. Okay, so if energy is going in, it's endothermic. If energy is coming out, it's exothermic. So along with all of this is the law of conservation of energy. Okay, and it's very much like the law of conservation of mass. Remember, the law of conservation of mass says that um, matter is neither created nor destroyed. Okay, so energy is the same thing. And it stems from the idea that the total energy of the universe, let me write this down. Oops. Total energy of the universe is constant. Okay, so the universe meaning everything, okay, all the way out to, you know, specks of dust on Pluto, all the way down to the hairs on your head, everything is the universe. Okay, so the total amount of energy in the universe is constant. So we're never creating or destroying energy, we're just moving it around, okay, or transforming it. Just like with matter, we're not creating or destroying it, we're just changing it, moving it around, turning it into something different. Okay, so along with that, we get this idea of delta E system equals negative delta E surroundings. So the system is simply what we're looking at. Okay, so if, if our, what we're looking at is a piece of hot metal, or if what we're looking at is a chemical reaction, or fill in the blank. If whatever we're paying attention to, that is the system. And the surroundings is everything else. Oh my, I can't write anything today. Okay, so what this particular slide is trying to show is that if we're playing Monopoly, right, any money that I have to pay goes to somebody else. So if I am the system, the other person and is the surroundings, okay? And any, any money that that person pays out goes to me. And it's equal in amount, just opposite, okay? So this idea of E system is negative E surroundings just means that whatever energy the system loses, the surroundings gain, or whatever energy the, the surroundings lose, the system gains. They trade. Okay, the energy has to go from one to the other in equal amounts. Okay, so let's look at this, this idea. And believe it or not, you actually know about this already just by living in the world. Okay, so let's say that we have a blacksmith that is shaping an iron rod. And that rod is red hot. Okay, so we have a hot iron rod. Okay, and he immerses it in a bucket of cold water. So think about what's happening there, right? So what happens to the temperature of the rod? The rod goes from hot to cool, right? And what happens to the temperature of the water? The water is going to warm up, okay? So whatever energy the rod loses in temperature, the bucket gains. Okay, so however much energy the rod loses, that energy has to go into the bucket of water. Okay, so if the rod is losing energy, notice the sign is negative. That means that the bucket of water is going to gain 
that much energy. Okay, so if the iron rod cools down, the bucket of water is going to warm up. And that's something that, okay, well, duh. <laughs> right, so the last line there, heat absorbed or released. So the rod is going to lose some heat. So heat is released. And the bucket of water, the heat is going to absorb. The water is going to warm up because it's accepting some heat energy. Okay, but whatever energy goes, leaves the rod has to go into the bucket of water. There's no other place for it to go. It doesn't disappear because of the law of conservation of energy. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video right here. We'll pick it up uh, with question two and we'll start doing energy conversions.